PCR 148-17, formerly bid 2018-143, installation of sprinklers at the Cooper building. Chief. Good evening, Chairman. Uh, Chief. Committee members, Ray Studley, Chief of Staff for Mayor Adesian. Um, Chairman, regarding this, this issue, uh, last session you had asked that it be held for um, further explanation as to what's actually going on with the splinters. I know initially there had been a request uh, to bid for them and then we had requested that it be withdrawn. You'd asked for some outside expert um, history on the issue. I have the city fire marshal with us uh, tonight who can come up uh, to further uh, answer any questions you do have. But at this point in time, um, I would ask that this issue be held we're presently, we've uh, petitioned the State Board of Fire Appeals through the State Fire Marshal's Office. We have a hearing scheduled for December 5th, um, at which point in time any type of uh, issue that was brought up by our City Fire Marshal will be brought to the State Fire Marshal and they will, they will uh, seek a resolution and if needed come up with a corrective action plan. So I do have the City Fire Marshal if you'd like to address him. Chief, um, let me make a clarification. Um, what I asked for specifically was a um, document from the city fire marshal and the state fire marshal stating that that Cooper building did not require sprinkler systems. And somebody is going to be assuming full responsibility for that decision. Because when this came before us back in July or August, and that was before you, Chief, that was brought to us and it was a health and safety issue. And we're gonna hear this a lot because we're gonna continue holding this until I get the information that I'm looking for. And it was a health and safety issue. And it's our fault that building is not gonna open in time because you folks are not approving the sprinkler system. And now we're gonna go back out for bid. And they went back out for bid because the bid that they sent to us wasn't even a bid. It was ridiculous is what it was. And in addition to that, the safety was paramount. We have to have this sprinkler system. Then all of a sudden the city council says, no, we're not going to move this. We're going to have you go back out for a bid and come to us with a bid that is a bid and doesn't have exemptions like prevailing wage rates, et cetera which is just a commonality in these bids that involve community federal monies. Now all of a sudden, we have a meeting of the minds, we have this meeting, and it's decided that we don't really need to do these sprinklers. Instead, what we're gonna do is we're gonna maneuver around a number, or we're gonna adjust this, or we're gonna adjust that. And now all of a sudden, all this concern and all this safety for the occupants in that building, which are children on the first floor and seniors on the second floor, now that isn't so paramount anymore because we have a way of maneuvering the numbers so we don't fall into that code. And I'm gonna to continue to hammer away on the record because it's this city council that keeps getting the finger pointed at it for delaying the opening of that building. First of all, we didn't approve any expenses for that building. Chairman, Should we not, can I, as can soon I, as I'm finished, Chief, you can. Okay. Sure. We didn't approve any expenses that I'm aware of. And now we're sitting here with this sprinkler system that I was supposed to get information within a couple of days from the city fire marshal or the state fire marshal saying the building doesn't need sprinklers, we understand the responsibility, et cetera, et cetera, and I am putting the responsibility on the city. I want to make it perfectly clear. This city council voted against the bid because it wasn't a bid. We supported the sprinklers. Nobody came back to us for it. Instead came back and said, eh, not so important anymore. I tell you that uh, due to the fact that there's a transfer of the building from the federal government to the city government, when that happens, a number of variables come into play from a fire code and a building code standpoint. Uh, that being said, I looked into it thoroughly. At this point in time, the state fire marshal has total jurisdiction, which is what you and I discussed. You said you wanted to find out to me who ultimately was in charge. 
it's been found that it is the state fire marshal because the transfer of use also includes it being considered a quote unquote daycare chairman. So when that takes when that takes effect, any daycare is subjected to the state fire marshal through regulatory reform with the state of Rhode Island. So at this point in time, the city fire marshal has made up a list of deficiencies uh, regarding a number of issues with the coding of that building. They are here present to speak to you all tonight to bring you up to speed to let you know what those deficiencies are, what the next steps are. Again, I'm not an expert in the fire code and fire inspection field, uh, but they are, and that's why they're here to speak to you all tonight. Again, the next step in the process is December 5th. They will appeal to the State Fire Marshal's Board of Appeals, and at that point in time, I think there will be resolution as to, number one, if suppression system is needed, number two, if not, a, no a fire notification system, which is already installed, may need to be advanced at some point. All of those issues will be will be rectified at the December 5th hearing. And I'm hoping for the city's sake to get a corrective action plan that we can then bring before you with potentially a bid for prospective sprinklers or a notification system or whatever the State Board of Appeals tells me to bring before you because it is a life safety issue. So that's where we're at, Chairman. You can tell me how to proceed from here. Sure. Marshal. State your name for the record, please. No problem. Fire Marshal, Fire Marshal Michael Madison. So let me clarify something once, once and for all. We never stated that it did not need sprinklers for this building. Thank you. There was a, nobody asked me whether or not that was the case. We had several meetings in regards to this, and we never at any point stated that sprinklers were not required. So, right, so you, let's clarify that once and for all. I appreciate that. Go ahead. Because this body was told that the marshal, the fire marshal, said sprinklers weren't necessary. So I'm glad that you're clearing that up. So we had several meetings in regards to this. There was a third party review by Jensen Hughes, and that's where these items come, on, come into play. When you change a use of a building, okay, the previous use was existing business occupancy. Okay, that was done in 2012. The former fire marshal did a deficiency at that time, okay? But at that time, I don't think the transition had fully taken place. So he was basing it on the existing occupancy at the time. The existing occupancy only called for a master system, okay, a fire alarm system, master fire alarm system, all right, and several other items that have been addressed since then. The fire alarm system has been addressed, but not fully. So the assembly area that we're designating an assembly area, and Jensen Hughes also is designating an assembly area, which was a former storage area, that, those numbers go over the 300 capacity. They're at 491. So that requires either or both the fire alarm and a sprinkler system. Jensen Hughes is proposing that we reduce the number below 300, and if they go above 300, they would incur a fire watch. That's what they're proposing. That's a variance that they're requesting. When we do a deficiency, which we did subsequently in October, and we did the deficiency based on the new occupancy, which is a new daycare and a new assembly and business. So it's mixed use, which is the more stringent code. It would be the assembly and the daycare. So because they're classified as new, they would have to, they would require to have a sprinkler system unless they get a variance from the State Board of Appeal, Fire Board of Appeal. We cannot issue that variance because we're classifying as new. They want us, Jensen used in the third party review, to change that to existing. They're requesting an interpretation of that, which is the Board of Appeals. I can't not change the designation of that. We're classifying it as new, and we have several areas that have to be addressed. So the State Board of Appeals would be the ones who made that final decision. So who approved the change of use for that building? As far as the change of use, well, I know that the former deficiency was 2012, and then Jensen Hughes did a third-party review, and that was prior to our review, our um, deficiency, which was October 17, 2017. And that document is, that's the piece that they're asking for variances, permanent variances on a lot of areas. There's dead-end corridors, there's um, no confirmation whether or not there's separation, so we need all those confirmations. I, I understand that, Marshall, um, but you said that because 
there was a change of use Correct. in the building. Correct. That change of use has to be approved by someone. We haven't approved anything yet. And has, this, proposing, has the city approved They're proposing the change, change of use. use. They're proposing. That doesn't mean it's approved. So essentially there's nothing approved. Pardon me? There's nothing approved. Nothing that, approved on the fire building. department's end. And the building department only approved, and I can't, can't speak for building entirely, but building only approved a recording studio, and that's it. Building department has a list of items also. I'm not going to address those because obviously I'm not in that department. So there is a State Board of Appeals meeting on December 5th for their interpretation of our deficiency in the Jensen Hughes report, which is a third party review. And they're entitled to do so. They're entitled to do a third party review. Right. <clears throat> so when this review is done, obviously, from what I just heard, there's many more things that have to be looked at. Well, you just said the review. With regard the to this building. Sorry to interrupt, but the review is done. The interpretation is not done. I understand. So let's just be clear I understand your review is done. Yes. But from the conversation that I've heard, it also tells me that there's further review that needs to be done. So if the change of use has not been approved, how is one going to file a request with the state fire marshal for a variance when the change of use has not even been approved they yet? Put it, so the way it works is they put an application forth. They have 30 days to apply to, hear, to be heard at the board. Once that application is accepted, there's a stay. So they can occupy with provisions, and that's what we have right now. We have provisions in place until they're heard. Okay. And hypothetically speaking, if they, they, the state, approves this change and, or this request for a variance and they don't have to put in the sprinklers and this room is, the capacity is um, capped at 300. So does that mean um, the state fire marshal is going to be in that building whenever a function is being held or the no, police department? Be... Who's going to monitor how many people are in that space? Well, if it's over 300, it would be the fire department, it would be a fire watch. How are you going to know? There, there is a little confusion as far as the state fire marshal. First of all, state fire marshal, that's why there's a lot of miscommunication in regards to this building. It's not a licensed daycare. It's classified as a daycare occupancy, but it's not licensed through the state. It doesn't have to be. It's a boys and girls club. But the children are over two and a half years old, so it falls under that category of a daycare. But it's not a licensed state care through the state. So because it's not licensed through the state, the state fire marshal technically doesn't have to do the um, inspection on this building. The local department can. Okay. So then you guys are going to be monitoring that space to make sure that the count stays under 300. Correct. Because if it goes... So anytime there's any sort of a function over there, somebody's going to be there to physically count bodies? Is that what's going to happen? Or? There's going to be somebody there if the, if the okay. occupancy is over from 300. From the department. Pardon me? From the department, fire Correct. department. Okay. Correct. Okay, so um, the chief has indicated that this is going to the state December 5th. It's a Tuesday. It's a Tuesday. We meet on the 4th. Um, any questions from members?